What is up, guys, gals, and non-binary pals? My name's Naomi. Welcome to House of Miscellanea. Hope you're all doing well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Good to see you. If you are coming back to see me, thank you for coming back. I've got a little something different and special to uh, share with you today. I was tagged by Diamonds and Thoughts on a questionnaire about everything diamond painting. I will be uh, tagging some people in this that I would like to see you do it. I will have all of the questions down in the description. So if you're looking for them, and I'm going to shout you out again at the end. So let's, we're going to check and see who's actually watching videos, right? I'm going to tag you in the comments too. Uh, I would like to tag Diamonds in Recovery. I would like to tag Amalia's World of Color. I would like to tag Rachel Ray, Diamond Nana, and Shay Does Crafting. Because I would like to see your guys' answers. Really curious. Really, really curious. Um, so, there are 25 questions. And holy crap. It's a lot of questions. Let's see if I can answer them for you. Uh, first question on this list is, how many diamond paintings have you completed? Well, uh, I am a really terrible, terrible person for, like, keeping track of things. And I didn't think much of it until I started doing my channel that, like, hey, you should probably keep track of these types of things. Um, so I honestly don't know a good answer to this. What I can tell you, though, is um, maybe what I have completed for the year so far. Uh, and then, I don't know. I've been diamond painting for five years, so I don't know. Add 50. We'll pretend 50 is the number because I wasn't doing a lot in those first five years, uh, mostly because just life, working, stuff like that. Um, so I think my count actually, plus, you know, paint gems kits counting as one each. Uh, so far, I believe I'm at 20 for the year. Uh, so 20 plus, give or take 50 over five years. Bleh. I will, uh, we'll go with that. We'll go with that as an answer. Um, it says, number two, if you're comfortable answering, how many diamond paintings do you currently have in your stash? Well, I am not uncomfortable answering. I don't have a good answer for you um, because I have been really bad at keeping count uh, since my stash video that I did earlier in the year. Um, I would say the number is probably, uh, I'll, I'll give an estimate and I'll say 90 to a hundred because it was 85. No, then maybe a hundred. We'll go with a hundred. Give or take. I, I wish I knew a better answer. Maybe by the time that I edit this, I'll I'll put an actual answer up on the screen. Um, I would like to disclaimer that by saying, you know, those are those are things I've collected over time. It took me time to build a collection. Uh, so, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say about somebody's stash number, maybe don't say anything at all to each their own, right? Um, it's something that I love. So that's it. I'll answer that question and disclaimer it by saying, be nice, guys. Um, even to those who do not have a stash, to those who have a stash, like, just be nice if you're watching these. Um... I mean, obviously, I can't stop you from judging, but, you know, whatever. Uh, okay, number three. When did you begin diamond painting? Tell us your diamond painting backstory. 
So those who watch my channel have kind of heard this story, uh, but I'll tell it again because it's worth retelling. Um, five years ago, I went first into detox and then into rehab um, for a really terrible opiate addiction. Um, when I was in detox, you were basically only allowed to have crayons. Like, they didn't even let us have sharp objects in there, right? Because you just never know what people are going to do with things. Um, but when I went into inpatient rehab, um, there was a woman sitting at a table. And she had this diamond painting. It was like a rainbow eye. And it was a round kit. And I asked her, like, what are you doing? She said, oh, this is diamond painting. I said, what is diamond painting? And she explained that it's, you know, sort of like cross stitch or color by number. She didn't really have a good, like, total explanation for it. She'd only started, you know, a couple months before herself. Um, she said it was really good at just keeping her mind busy. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to. I got to try that. And she said, well, you can sit down with me and paint. And I said, cool. So I did. I sat down with her and I worked on her diamond painting with her. And it changed my whole life. Um, through the just whole nine months of my recovery, I first nine months of my recovery, um, that's all I did. I took diamond paintings with me to meetings. I diamond painted, you know, pretty much day and night. It gives me something to do with my hands. It keeps my brain focused. And uh, it's really been a godsend. So uh, I began almost five years ago to the day. Um, coming up like end of July, middle, middle of July. Yeah, middle of July. Um, in 2019 so all right number four if you could only purchase from one diamond painting company for the rest of your life who would you purchase from and why well um I know there are a lot of diamond art club answers out there and with reason diamond art club makes I mean arguably the best canvases on the market, the best drills on the market, um, and they are a fantastic company, but I'm not going to say Diamond Art Club. Uh, Diamond Art Club's fantastic, but I'm going to say another company, um, and that is, I think that's going to be, that's hard. I've painted a lot of small companies now. And, um, I want to, I want to raise up a little, a little company and I'm going to say Lazy River Crafts. Um, the reason I'm going to say Lazy River Crafts is, uh, quality is good. Pricing is good. They're a licensed diamond painting company. So, you know, that artists are being compensated. Uh, Stephanie, the owner over at Lazy River Crafts is absolutely amazing um she's one of the sponsors for wings and anythings which is still going on right now uh and actually if you go to lazy river crafts until july 31st 2024 the year that we're in uh you can save 15 percent if you use the code wings so you should go over and order from Stephanie over at LazyRiverCrafts.com and check it out for yourself. Um, customer service is exceptional. Uh, Stephanie has some really fantastic artists over there. There are old masters. There are new artists. It's just wonderful. And if you have any issues with your canvas, with your drills, with anything, uh, Stephanie is sure to help you out um customer service is top top notch okay so that's my that's going to be my answer for that 
Uh, number five. When diamond painting, what is your go-to media to consume? Audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube, etc. Um, okay, so I like to I like to watch YouTube videos. Like I will uh, watch people's uh, whipping chats. I will. Uh, I'll check out. You know, um, there there's this uh, paranormal like react guy that. Uh, one of the Dazzlers, Ducky, introduced me to um, Casper site, and it's really funny. Um, but when I'm not watching YouTube videos, I'm watching like Hulu, Netflix, you know, whatever. Uh, and I'll watch, I'll binge watch Survivor while I'm diamond painting. That's one of my favorites. Um, I just like consumed all of the newest season of Bridgerton. Uh, I like to watch seasons of things. So like RuPaul's Drag Race, Survivor, um, Bridgerton, just uh, Amazing Race. Just anything that has a bunch of content that I can watch all, you know, like in a go. Um, I hate waiting for, uh, you know, stuff to come out. So um, I tend to watch things that already have like a bunch of seasons so I can watch and rewatch um, over and over again. So number six, what is your favorite category to diamond paint landscapes, fantasy, animals, etc.? cetera. Um, so I adore portraits. Uh, I have more portraits. I feel like in my stash than anything else. Um, I love abstracts. So, like, I'm currently working on Try to Follow. That's an abstract. I love abstracts. Uh, I do really like a good fantasy animal, like a Pegasus or, a, you know, a star tiger or a really cool cat or what have you. But portraits, portraits are really, like, my bread and butter of my stash. And then, yeah, it kind of goes from there. But that's... My first love is portraits. Um, what is the artist you have completed the most diamond paintings from? Uh, I would say I've actually got a really nice array of different diamond painting artists. Uh, I do own the most Moraleses. So once I get around to it, uh, that's going to be my, my most finishes. But uh, for right now, I am almost done with my second Mrs. Butter D. So I would say I'm the closest to finishing Mrs. Butter D as multiples. So Mrs. Butter D. But I own multiple paintings from Chrisabug, Morales... Um, Curtis Reykjavich, uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm really close to finishing my second Curtis Reykjavich. So it's a tie between Curtis Reykjavich and, um, uh, Mrs. Butter D. All right. Number eight. What is the artist you own the most diamond paintings from? Well, I guess I kind of already answered that. Uh, so Margaret Morales, definitely. Uh, I own all of the pieces that Diamond Art Club has put out so far. I missed the whole Diamond Shop um, selling of them because I I wasn't, like, I was just buying from, like, crap companies when they were open. It wasn't really until this year that I started buying from, like, only reputable licensed diamond painting companies. So, man. I keep dropping these drills. Uh, so, yeah, but I would say Morales second is probably Chrisabug, um, Curtis Reykjavich, Camilla de Erico is another one. But, yeah, those are the top, top peoples that I own. Um, what is your go-to wax, go-to putty, if you use neither, which, what is your go-to? 
So when I use wax, I use um, Patty Wax Super Sticky. Though lately, I've been putting putty in my single placer as well. My go-to is definitely Butterfly Effect Wears. I am a hard placer, so Butterfly Effect Wears being a drier putty uh, tends to work best. Though I have been having tremendous luck with the Diamond Art Club um, Sparkle Sticky uh, Wax Putty. Um, I have tried glue dots in my single placers. Um, and when I had one that was staying in there, it was working great. And then I ran into some uh, trouble ABs and went back to putty for a while. What do you do with your finished diamond paintings? Do you hang them, put them in a portfolio, or something else? Um, that's question number 10. Uh, I actually... So, I have sold a couple of my finishes. Uh, one of my whips is actually slated to be sold, which I did not expect at all. Um, I have a large... Nick Pro portfolio bag, which is, uh, it's huge. It fits my largest painting, which is a 70 by 105 in it. Uh, it is wonderful and you can store it upright with some modifications or you can put it underneath a bed. The rest, um, I have these, like, it's a six tiered pants hanger. Uh, and I use that and sometimes I'll hang my finishes on that so that I can actually look at them. Uh, and then I am working on framing a couple so that I can hang them in my house. Um, try to follow the one that I'm working on here. That one will be definitely uh, framed and hung somewhere in my house. Just got to figure out exactly what frame I'm going to use, and how I'm going to frame it, the whole thing. All right, number 11. Do you like to open your kits right away, or do you keep them sealed until you're ready to work on them? So being a content creator is kind of goofy because um, my kits get opened for unboxings or when I'm ready to work on them, which usually means I've unboxed it for the channel and then I'm working on it. Uh, and it is, uh, typical for me to open them for that. Now, normally before, and this is before I started creating content, I was op opening some and then I was storing the drills and the, uh, paintings separate from each other. But then I realized, like, if I ever wanted to de-stash them, some people are really picky about receiving them sealed, or at least with the box. So, you know, if they're unboxed, I'm very careful about putting them back in the box, and then with all the original stuff, including toolkit, you know, whatever. So, that's, the, that's my answer to that. Um, number 12... What is your number one unicorn kit that if it was easy to obtain, you'd love to own? I probably talk about this too much. Uh, my number one unicorn is probably Mystery 47 from Diamond Art Club. That is a massive unicorn for me. Uh, the problem is that most people who have it are not looking to de-stash it. And if they are, sometimes it is at an exorbitant amount. Um, but it's literally the last color out of place until, you know, Diamond Art Club decides to print another color out of place that I, that I'm missing. Uh, I have Surreal Blues, I have Try to Follow, and I have Dreamscape. So... Um, I need that Mystery 47 so bad. Um, but I've kind of resigned to I'm probably never going to get it. So there's that. <laughs> um, number 
13. What is the kit in your stash you are most looking forward to working on? Oh, that's a hard question. I have a lot of really good pieces in my stash that I would consider, um, uh, I like to call them flavor savers. Savor the flavors. Yeah. Um, kits that, I, that I'm like holding on to because I want to, I want to work on them when I can really devote the time and energy to them. So, uh, oh man, that's a hard question. I would say it's probably going to be, mm, inside watery eyes, Margaret Morales. That's, that's definitely high up there. Uh, I believe I'm going to be working on it in December. Um, I'm going to be doing a, an unofficial DP along um, called Mary Morales. Not going to be prizes or anything like that, but I wanted to do a Morales, you know, for my birthday. And so uh, I, that one's going to be Inside Watery Eyes. And it's one of, I mean, I love every one of her, so it's really hard to choose. Um, I would say second to that one is... Probably Realm of the Cats, actually, is another one that I'm really, really, really stoked to work on uh, because it is an absolutely gorgeous diamond painting. So, a uh, Morales and a non-Morales for you. I know I cheated. I gave you two. Um, number 14. Do you prefer confetti, color blocking, or a mix of both? I like a mix of both. If I have too much color blocking, I go completely bat crap, uh, banana sandwiches. And if I have too much confetti, I again go bat crap, banana sandwiches. And I don't like being banana sandwiches. Okay. Okay. Um, I would much prefer to have a mix of both where I can just work up a nice fast spot and then slow it on down. I want to be able to do a little of both. So next one is number 15. How do you pick which piece you want to work on next? Oh my gosh, it's so hard. It is so hard to pick kits. So in the past, I have put up voting. Um, but sometimes it's like, you know, somebody else will be working on something or want to work on something. And they'll say, oh, my gosh, will you work on a blank with me? Well, yeah, of course I will. Uh, we're planning on doing a mystery kit in uh, September and October. Or maybe just September. Um, yeah, we want to do, again, another unofficial DP along where we would be doing a mystery kit. So sometimes it's based on, like, the events that the community um, of Dazzlers, uh, that's the, the channel's, you know, members and unofficial members from the Discord, what we all pick together. Uh, and then when I'm not doing that, it's like one will call out to me so hard and I'm like, okay, I need to work on this. Like sometimes I'll receive a kit and I will just go, all right, I got to get this up immediately. Uh, it happened with Ajisai. It happened with Magical Moonlighter. Uh, it's happened a few times. The only downfall to that is when I do that, I will work on only that. And I wouldn't say like to my detriment or anything. I think any painting that I work on is worthwhile time spent. But I, yeah, I don't work on any of my other whips. And then they just sit there 
And then it's like, well, if I get it done by the end of blank month, then I'll start it or whatever. Uh, this, this one, try to follow. As soon as I unboxed this and kitted it up, I mean, I have been slamming my way through it because it has quickly become one of my favorite paintings to have ever worked on. So next question, 16, what is your favorite season and holiday to diamond paint? So I don't have any seasonal kits. Um, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know why I don't have any seasonal kits. I would probably pick a paint gem if I'm going to do a seasonal kit. And more than likely it would be fall related because I'm a basic white girl. Yeah, that's why. Because I'm a basic white girl. So I would say it'll probably end up being a fall theme if, if I do uh, pick something that is a themed. And then, yeah, that would make it my favorite season or holiday to diamond paint. Number... 17. Do you work on one kit at a time or have multiple whips at once? Yeah, I am a serial multi-whipper. Multi I, I whip many at once. <laughs> um, I love to have a variety of things to choose from because I diamond paint sometimes based on my mood. And if my mood is really foul... Sometimes a certain diamond painting is just a pick-me-up, instant pick-me-up. Uh, and then at other times, I am feeling maybe, you know, melancholy, and I want to paint something that reflects how I'm feeling. I put so much of my energy into the diamonds when I lay them, very intentionally. Even if I'm working quickly, I'm working very intentionally and my intentions might be, you know, to de-stress or whatever. And in order to do that, I need to really pour myself into focus, right? And so a kit that would be really confetti heavy might require you to do that, right? So if I have a confetti heavier kit, in my whips then I work on that or if there's one I'm gonna sell and I'm maybe not having as much fun with it I would mix it up and put uh, I'd mix it up and I'd put a few like you know color block or a really colorful one a really dark one yeah I have many whips I think my current number is up to nine Maybe even more than that, you guys. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> um, all right, 18. Neutral slash dark pieces or colorful pieces. Well, as you can see, I do love color, 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 color all the time. But I purposely purchased kits that were outside of my normal because... There is a point where I do get a little, for lack of a better term, burnt out on working a kit of a specific fashion, right? And so I, having, you know, something that is completely out of my normal would allow me to paint longer or to really enjoy the piece or whatever. Yeah. So I like my colorful pieces, except when I don't. Because sometimes I do need, I do need a, a neutral or a dark piece. Number, that was 18. Number 19, large pieces or snack size pieces. Well, I don't like, you know, massive kits, uh, like anything over 105. 
I'm not like clamoring to buy, but I do enjoy a larger piece. Uh, my largest finish is so far is Aji Sai, and I can't remember the size. Um, she is a 65 by 95 centimeters, um, and she's my largest finish so far. Uh, I think my largest finish once I get done with it is a whip I'm doing right now, um, Grand Canal and Basilica Venice, which is a 70 by 105. That would then be my largest finish, um, technically. So, uh, let's see. Number 20, place diamonds with tweezers or a pen. I will very occasionally if like I cannot get wax or putty to behave, I will, you know, maybe tweezer an AB or something. Uh but I cannot um I can't do a whole piece that way. I cannot do a whole piece that way. That would drive me absolutely banana sandwiches. Like no. No, 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 no. Um I also single place with my multi-placer so I'm using the multi-placer more often than I am using the uh single placer so there is that too uh number 21 squares or rounds so the funny thing is I did not actually start working on squares until this year I practiced on a paint gem kit first uh, because I was working on apples from Diamond Art Club and the grid was really tight. I was having a lot of trouble with it. Um, I, I'd, I'd had no practice. And so, um, I, I was having issues. I switched over to a paint gem and I was able to, uh, get practice in that way. And then I, I was fine. I practiced on paint gem and then I did paint the moon and then I went back to apples and I'm going to tell you, uh, hands down, I love squares. I don't know why I was so scared to do squares. I know why, because I was scared off by a really crappy, like unlicensed kit that was just garbage. It had garbage drills. Nothing was fitting together. It was making me very frustrated and, um, I'm so, so, so glad that I switched over. Oh, my goodness. I do enjoy uh, a round as, like, a break sometimes. Because sometimes I'm, like, getting really uh, just, like, burnt out on squares. And I will do a round. I always keep an active round whip uh, going because I need to have that round to work on in between. So what is your favorite method for placing AB drills? Mm. So I would prefer to multi-place and place ABs with a pen, but there's times where I cannot get the wax or putty to participate with me. Uh, and I will end up, um, I'll end up just using some tweezers or single placing or whatever. I, you know, honestly, like <laughs> whatever method will work. That's the method that I use for placing ABs. Um, it doesn't have to be my favorite. It just has to work. You know, uh, ABs are so freaking um, tricky that, yeah, I'll do whatever works, honestly. If it works at the time, that's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Next question is question 23. What is your preferred method of sectioning off a canvas? So, Diamond Art Club makes it so easy to section a canvas with their uh, pre-perforated plastic, say that 10 times fast, that I don't have to section off a canvas. However, for 
canvases that do not braided plastic. I will typically go through and I will section it off with washi tape and then I use a ceramic pen knife, not not like an exacto because this thing like you would have an impossible time cutting through a canvas with that little itty bitty blade um it'll basically just cut through the plastic and i will section it off with washi and then cut the squares that i need there have been times where i've used release paper in place of you know the the plastic sheeting i'll put down uh the release paper um, but for the most part, I like to use washi. I like to section it off in, you know, kind of bite-sized sections and then uh, cut the plastic as I go. Uh, next question. Do you have any other crafty hobbies aside from diamond painting? Uh, so I recently took up pen turning, diamond painting pen turning. Uh, I won, I needed another hobby. Two, I needed a little something to maybe make some side cash. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a whole thing, but I am excited to make a little extra side cash with it. And yeah, so I'm I'm gonna try and make diamond painting pens and see if I can succeed at it or not. Uh, so far, it's been okay. Um, I got like here. I'll show you a few of my finishes uh, for those who haven't seen them before. So far, I've only worked on wood. I poured canvas or poured canvas poured resin. Uh, the other day and so I'm going to incorporate what I've learned with wood and I'm going to incorporate that with resin so I'm super excited about it uh, these are for sale if you're looking for a wood pen they're they're all wood um, but otherwise yeah that's my other that's my other little hobby that I have is making diamond painting pens um, Number 25 <clears throat> is a revisit to what I said earlier uh, from like the first part of this video. And that is who do you tag for this video? I missed one earlier and I wanted to mention because uh, I, I remembered there was one uh, that, I, that I didn't get on there. So first person is Diamonds in Recovery. Noel, I tag you. I'm going to tag Amalia from Amalia's World of Color. I am going to tag Rachel Ray. Uh, she probably won't even see this, so she she's busy. It's okay if you can't do one of these, Rachel. But thank you for watching. I appreciate that you've mentioned you watch my videos and... Like, you have no idea what that means to me, that you that you watch. Really, all of you, but... Rachel, like, I, I look up to you. I look up to you. Like, you are a, you are a benchmark, for real, in our community. Not just for the videos that you put out, but, like, you have, honestly, just the most friendly and welcoming vibe. Um, you make a person feel like they're included and in... Uh, today's world that can be really hard to come by I mean uh, you know welcoming veteran youtubers just across the board uh, can you know be as rare as hen's teeth so uh, thank you Rachel Ray on uh, the next one Nana from Diamond Nana I want to see what you got Diamond Nana uh, also, Shay does crafting. I know sometimes Shay catches my lives. I don't know if Shay watches my videos, but Shay, I'd love to hear what you have to say. I know you've got lots of experience with lots of different diamond painting companies and um, lots of experience generally. Um, I love the the closeness that you have with your um, viewers and uh, just 
awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, and then next that I forgot earlier, and I'm gonna I'm gonna plop her name in there probably in an edit, but uh, diamonds and dragonflies. Uh, you commented on a video of mine fairly recently, a whip and chat, and so I'm tagging you. Go ahead and give me some fun answers for this uh, exercise. Um, but thanks for sticking around, listening to my answers, and uh, yeah, I hope at least one person will participate so I don't feel like a big loser who has no friends. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy diamond painting content. Uh, hit the like button if you like my video. And uh, as ever, you guys, I hope that wherever you are in this great, big, beautiful world, that you are having a wonderful morning, evening, or afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are. I'm going to see you next time, all right? Goodbye.